This video started off so f***ing good. Be Quiet introduces a new way to keep your PC build cool, silent, and looking fresh. Meet the Silent Base 802, available in black or white, windowed, or silence focused. Each case comes with interchangeable top and side panels, a fully kitted out front I.O. selection, three Pure Wings fans, and a completely modular interior layout that lets you even run the system inverted. With support for up to 420mm radiators or a full complement of hard drives, make the Silent Base the start of your next PC build. Check out the link below or head to BeQuiet.com to learn more. I guess I need to recount the last few days here in the BPS Customs office with this graphics card and this crazy setup. But uh, it's not gonna be a fun story to tell, but I think it's important for people to hear. So before we get into it, make sure you get subscribed to the channel. Uh, we do a lot of PC build content, gaming stuff, how to's, and I promise you most of it is a lot more upbeat than this video. But I guess that's the nature of this story. This is a PowerColor RX 6900 XT Red Devil. It's probably the highest end AMD graphics card that you can buy right now, maybe outside of the data center or something. I'm not too familiar with those products. But this is for sure their highest end GPU for the consumer market and the Red Devil is maybe the best version of it. It's an amazing looking card and it's an amazing performing card. It does have a few drawbacks versus the NVIDIA high-end stuff. Namely, the ray tracing support is not great right now. They're working on that. But it is very powerful and it's good at a lot of things. One of the things that I guess it's not great at is surviving an overclocking session with uh, me. Now, I'm not going to put that on this card. I put that squarely on my shoulders and... That's the story that I want to tell and why I will not be doing any of this content moving forward. Overclocking is an enormous amount of fun. And if you're into this hobby, not necessarily overclocking, but just PCs in general, it could produce some extremely interesting results and allow you to gather information about your hardware, about your settings, about your cooling setup, and about software that you might not have otherwise had access to or been able to play around with. I've been overclocking for a long time. I built my first PC when I was in my teens and now I'm slightly older than that. And for the most part, anytime you build a system, you wanna see what it can do. And part of that is pushing the hardware, overclocking it as much as you can. Now, I recently got into the XOC scene, which is extreme overclocking. Now I did some of this a few years ago, maybe two, three years ago with 2080 Ti's, but I never got into the sub-zero part of it until recently, maybe last year. Now Steve from Gamers Nexus and Jay from Jay's Two Cents and many other YouTubers have been doing this kind of thing for a long time and this is all pretty new to me. This was the first liquid nitrogen pot that I ever bought. And it's only fairly recently that I've gotten to use it at all. So last year when the whole RIP series was happening and I was trying to get in on the fun because I thought it was interesting and would provide some good content for you guys, um, I was doing it with 3090s, both for the win three cards and I had an MSI Gaming X Trio. And I'll be honest with you, while I achieved some good results, I broke about $5,000 worth of hardware making those videos. I didn't really want to admit it at the time. I didn't say anything about it in the video and I hardly mentioned it at all on social media. Maybe I made a post about breaking one of my GPUs or something like that. But the truth is that I was either careless or maybe a little bit unlucky despite, I guess, what my hoodie says. Uh, and just inexperienced in general. And I think I dove into it without understanding fully what I needed to do to prepare a graphics card, to prepare a pot, to prepare myself for what it was gonna take to not only get these cards running at sub-zero temperatures, but also to do it safely and to make sure that they survive the process. Uh, I had one of my cards 
have a couple capacitors get broken off because I accidentally hit it with this very heavy copper pot uh, when I was trying to maneuver it into place and I, the car just stopped functioning after that. I had one of my cards that I put through a dishwasher as per a lot of people online saying that that was the thing to do to clean off all the Vaseline after you were done with it. The card actually survived the overclocking session but died during the cleaning process. I, I don't know if um, the pressure from the water did something or if the, there was some heat setting that I forgot to turn off in the dishwasher or something. Regardless, the car didn't function after that. And, I, I did this with three different RTX 3090s, and I didn't get sampled any 3090s. Those were all retail purchases by me or purchases from third-party individuals or trades that I worked out for other hardware in order to get those cards. So that was a significant financial blow to the channel and to the finances that I have available to purchase hardware and things like that. So I kind of chalked that up to my own immaturity in this space and like I said maybe a little bit of carelessness and a little bit of unluckiness I, I don't know um, I, I, I hate to say that I, I, I play poker a lot and the people that go around saying that they're unlucky are generally the ones who don't understand why they're losing so I don't want to ever really attribute that to why I failed at something I, I guess luck is a thing but I'd like to say more that I, the blame falls on me rather than some, I don't know, unknown entity uh, looking down on me and cursing me or something like that. So I'm going to say that it's mostly my inexperience that caused these issues. So when I got this PowerColor 6900 XT, it again is something that I didn't get sampled. I had to buy this. Uh, I traded some hardware and uh, ended up, you know, paying a significant price for this card. Uh, I, I didn't have a lot of out-of-pocket expense because like I said, I, I was able to maybe sell some other stuff and kind of get the money. Basically flipping hardware for hardware is what I ended up doing. But at the same time, this is a $1,700 piece of hardware that no longer functions. Now, why? Why did this one fail? Because I had learned a significant lesson last year when I was originally doing this and I thought that I had taught myself how to be better and be more careful at extreme overclocking. So when I got this card, I, I knew that, you know, in order to get this pot mounted, uh, I had to come up with a new mounting plate because it didn't exist. No mounting plates exist for these cards. If you want to do any extreme overclocking using LN2 and these kinds of pots, you have to fabricate the stuff yourself. So I did. I, I took some measurements with my calipers. I made sure that I had the, um, the spacing correct for the mounting holes on the GPU and on the pot. I 3D modeled this uh, in Tinkercad online, and then I 3D printed it in PLA. And PLA is pretty resistant to cold. It actually gets more pliable and less um, on a brittle when it gets super cold. So I figured that it would be fine to use this uh, as my mounting plate. And indeed, it actually worked out really well. I was very happy with the solution that I came up with for mounting the pot to the card. So I got my mount all set up and I ran through some initial tests. And I have a lot of footage here that I took while doing this because I was having a really, really good day. The, this card is a really good performer a really good overclocker, was taking very well to what I was doing to it, including increasing the power limits, basically maxing out the memory slider, uh, and then starting to play around with core clock. We were getting some good results in Fire Strike Ultra. I'm gonna show all that footage to you at the end of this video. So if you guys are interested in that, please stick around and I'll show you the process that I was doing with overclocking. Um, but then I, I, I went into the extreme overclocking side of it and I was using dry ice and acetone to, uh, to create a bath and it gets down to about negative 70 C. And for a little bit of time, this card was functioning fine. But the AMD drivers aren't particularly fond of cold. These cards have trouble booting 
when it is super cold and also um, temperature reporting in the AMD software. As soon as you go sub-zero, it just bugs out completely. So I was having some stability issues running this card below zero and I couldn't complete a single run with any kind of settings with the card at, you know, minus 60 degrees or whatever I was running it at. Things just kept crashing. And eventually there was some frost that was building up on the outside of the pot as is normal when you do these kinds of things. Um, but I apparently, what I realized later, I apparently had forgotten or overlooked the fact that there are two really small holes at the top of the CPU package. And I don't know why this is here, why they're there. Um, the rest of the card I had pretty well protected uh, from condensation and frost, but I didn't seal those holes. Um, I don't really have any reason for it. Either it was overlooked uh, or I didn't think it was important. I don't remember my thought process exactly. But usually what I'll do is I'll take some nail polish and I'll, I'll cover all the SMDs around the die itself. And in this case, if I would have done that, I would have covered those holes as well. But this, I didn't. I didn't do it this time. I thought the Vaseline I was using was going to be sufficient for protecting this area. And clearly it wasn't because what I think happened is condensation got into those holes and underneath the die and shorted it out. So I did some probing with a multimeter and figured out that um, these two power connectors, the ones on the ends, are fine and they work. This one in the middle has a short. And this is the one I believe that provides power directly to the die. I, I'm pretty sure that that's how it's working. My multimeter skills are only mediocre. But um, basically what could happen is I could have this GPU plugged in on, the, on my test bench and I could have this in the PCIe slot and I could have a PCIe power connector on this one, uh, this, uh, this input and on this input and the car, at least the system will turn on. I could press the power button and things will start to happen. If at all I have a power connector in the middle, I won't, the, the system won't even turn on at all. It'll get, it'll, I'll hear clicking out of the power supply and the whole thing will, it won't even boot. It won't even start the process of putting power into the motherboard, which tells me that this is where my short is and I confirmed it with a multimeter. And there's the GPU die at all does not get hot in any way. So there's no power going to it. So, and I'll demo that for you guys, just so you know what I'm talking about. Cause right now I'm sounding kind of crazy. Hopefully you guys are able to hear this. Here we go, pressing the power button. So what I've determined is that um, I need to get more educated in this before I attempt it again, if I ever do attempt it again. Uh, I can't keep blowing up hardware like this and have it in any way be sustainable for me and the channel because this is just crazy. This is not something that I'm gonna be able to get warranty to cover. First of all, I bought this, I had to buy this from a third party and um, Power Colors warranty is not transferable. So this is a retail card. It was purchased by somebody at a store, but it wasn't me. And that means that I have no warranty on this. Now, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm gonna to write to Power Color and see if there's something that they could do to help me out. Um, and that, yes, it is a benefit of having direct contact with vendors. And I understand that not a lot of people have that. But then again, not a lot of people are putting LN2 pots on their $1,700 graphics cards. So I guess it balances out. My point about all this and a lot of this rambling, what it's leading to is that I, I make a lot of mistakes while doing this kind of stuff. Uh, I've been building PCs for a long time and I have a good amount of knowledge about that aspect of things how to build a PC, how to how parts go together, how to make things look pretty, how to optimize performance on a normal build. This is a new world to me. Going below zero is not something that I had ever done before. And um, I think that I shouldn't be doing it anymore unless I get a proper lesson from somebody who is better at it than I am. 
I thought that I was educated enough to be able to take something like this on and I have now made several mistakes that have led to many thousands of dollars in broken hardware. And um, at some point, you really got to just say, you know what, it's not, it's not luck. Uh, it's not coincidence. It's not faulty hardware. It's, it's you. And um, I'm coming to that point now. And as such, uh, I won't be doing any more of this kind of content for the channel. Um, and I don't know if any of you guys really liked it or we're into it. I hope so because it's fun. Uh, but for me, uh, you got to cut your losses at some point. And it's important to realize when you need more information and more training on a, uh, <coughs> on a subject before moving forward with it. Because, you know, I, I don't know if this is necessarily dangerous but, you know, we're playing with negative 70 degree temperatures and dry ice and electronics and electricity. You never know what could potentially happen if you're just an idiot, like winging it, basically. Uh, and I don't want to be that guy anymore because, uh, you know, it's, it's important to know your limitations. Uh, I'm good at a lot of things. I'm good at PC building. I'm okay at YouTube, but uh, I'm bad at this. And I think that um, in life, to get philosophical, it is important to know your limits and to understand when you need help uh, or more information or anything that might help you in the future. Because um, going at it on my own for the past year or so has had consequences and it is... It's pretty unfortunate. So, yes, I am quitting this. Uh, will not be doing it anymore. And I am sad because I like it. And um, I like this. I like this hardware. I like playing around with it. I, I, I enjoy seeing what it can do. And, oh, man. Um, you know, having that conversation with yourself that... that um, Having that conversation with yourself sometimes is hard, you know, telling yourself that that you can't do this anymore uh, is is difficult, especially if it's something that you enjoy and you originally thought that you might be pretty good at. So anyway, that's it. I am quitting the extreme overclocking scene and it is entirely my fault. And here is the footage that I shot during the process of overclocking this card as much as I did, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for watching. First run with everything at stock, absolutely no tuning done to CPU or GPU, was a 13887 in Firestrike Ultra with graphic scores of 13897 and a physics score of 38180. Now, we could take a closer look at some of the uh, performance metrics here as far as like what our temperatures were our frame rates were uh, and and the frequencies were that we were operating at and if this is going to be the most important one this down here this is the GPU operating frequency and you could see it was pretty consistently over 2300 megahertz when running the second test but the first test was lower than that it was uh, 2200 megahertz plus so our goal is going to be to get that number up to what is essentially the maximum that it could be, which is 3,000. Uh, we obviously have a ways to go here. And I'll also be probably trying to work on the CPU as well. But that's much less important than our GPU here. And um, there's a lot of tuning to be done. So Firestrike now, or you know, 3D Mark now gives you these these advanced metrics right on the results page, which is really nice. Um, but it does show you that you know the maximum right now, the best score in the world is 16160. For I think this is for my combo, so a 5950X and a 6900XT. Let's actually bring up the uh, the Firestrike Hall of Fame results. 
and see where we're at. So Firestrike Ultra, one GPU. Oh, so it's actually it's actually higher than that. So OGS and Lumi are way up there, but that's with a 3090. Um, I'm thinking, I mean, it's possible to get in the top 10 here. I mean, all these these scores down here are running, you know, 6900 XT, 6900 XT, 6900 XT with a 5950X. So, but it's probably with LN2. Uh, we'll see how, how, how well we could do this weekend. Uh, we got some days to work on it, but yeah, ways to go to climb this ladder and we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. The first thing to do is just to try some very basic tuning. So crank the fan up to 100%. I'm sure you can probably hear that in the background. Uh, and then the VRAM on these are very limited. They max out at 2150, so I just crank that slider. And then I crank the power slider up. Only plus 15% is the highest this will go. So we'll see what that does without messing with any of our GPU clocks at all. Uh, maybe the lower temperatures from the max fan speed will allow us to boost up higher uh, and then we'll work off of that. Wow, that made quite the difference and I haven't even started tuning this GPU. Look at this, 14,578. That is a crazy increase over what we had originally. I haven't even done anything yet. If we come down here, we could see that our frequencies were much higher. We were sustained a high 2400s in the second test and above uh, mostly above 2400 in the first test so wow 14578 I don't even know if that even gets us in the top 100 no it doesn't the, the 100 is uh, 14891 but like I said this is no overclock on our GPU or CPU right now this is still stock that's a crazy number this makes me hopeful. Just to see what would happen, I am running the Furmark GPU, basically power virus test, to see what kind of a power draw we can max out at here. And it seems to be capping out at 323 watts. Now this card has three eight pin PCIe power connectors. And from the research that I've done, it seems that people have been able to get it up to 400 watts. So I think that if this ends up being a limiting factor, I could try to mess around with the uh, more power tool and see if I can get this to go any higher. And uh, hopefully that'll help us out if we, if we end up hitting a ceiling. But uh, we're gonna try other things first. We're gonna try some you know exotic cooling first and then we'll start messing with that. All right, so I, I decided to just do it before we even got into the dry ice cooling. Uh, cranked up the power limit to 400 watts, and it seems to be running pretty well. We got Fermark running in the background, and um, I don't know, nothing's going wrong so far, fingers crossed. Uh, temperatures are getting up there, so the um, our, our, our exotic cooling is going to have some work to do. But I wonder if just running it with the higher power limit would give us a better score. All right, with that little boost to 400 watts, we got a 14640, so a little bit of an improvement. I am having an issue here that the 3D Mark is not recognizing my driver. So I'm trying to figure out what this validation warning was, and I pulled up the score online, and it said that it cannot. My graphics driver is not approved. This is just the AMD drivers. I don't know why. I'm gonna have to try to figure that out but whatever scores we end up getting uh, I will save and hopefully at some point we can upload uh, but if we come down here we could see that the uh, the average frequency of our GPU is sustaining nicely right around 2500 and right around 2500 so even though so it was definitely power limit that was preventing this from going higher because this the graphics test one was much lower with the lower power limit and you can see it's just a flat line right here. Like the, these two are just flat lines. So that is definitely what you want to see. And um, that means that we are going to have a much better chance of getting a higher score. And we can even adjust the power limit up a little bit more. This, this card, I think this card can really take it. It's got a really good VRM. It's got three PCIe power connectors. Um, I'm hoping that if, you know, we'll, we'll do what we need to do here, and then if we end up hitting a wall, we could even go higher on the power. Jeez, this is on air. 
My fans are still blasting away over here. Hold on, let me, uh... Let me fix that. Okay. Yeah, 15, 119. Uh, what I did was... I started tuning the GPU a little bit. Now, uh, AMD is a little different than NVIDIA. It makes you set a min and a max. Uh, and right now, this slider is capped at 3000. I can't go any higher than 3000 on the max frequency. I think the goal here is going to be to get this card to run at 3000 without dipping at all. But we'll see if that actually happens. What I tried out was 2700 max, 2500 uh, min. Uh, and then everything else the same as I've been showing you already. And that resulted in the 15119. Now if we scroll down to average frequencies, uh, this was running uh, in the mid 2600s pretty consistently, again with that really nice flat line. So that makes me happy. It, uh, and I think that even though we didn't hit that 2700 number, that there's probably a little more room here even before we go sub-zero uh, because the temperatures were, I mean, the temperatures were running in the 50s or low 50s or high 40s. So I think that, um, I don't know, we could work on this a little bit more and this is going to be a fun day. Before we go any further, I decided that it was prudent to try to get this power limit up as high as it would go. So uh, 425 is probably as high as I'm comfortable trying to set this power uh, without some assurances that going higher than that would be okay. Because the problem with using the tool that I'm using is if you go too high, you can brick the card or at least brick one of the BIOSes. And I'm really just trying to avoid doing that right now. But this is about 100 watts higher than we were getting with the stock OC BIOS which is going to allow us a lot more headroom and hopefully some higher clock speeds. I'm going to do one more run here with the stock air cooler in place, and uh, then it's time to go sub-zero. So getting up there now, uh, 15421, and this is still on air, and you can see that uh, 3D Mark actually has chosen to validate this score. And that's because I actually went back. I rolled the drivers back um, two versions to one ver to a version that came out a couple weeks ago and uh, now this is recognized as a valid score so this will be good this will be uploaded at some point and this is in the top 100 already I think this is probably like 60 or 70th or something like that but that's not our goal our goal is obviously to go much higher than that so um, the settings I was using here and I think the highest we're going to be able to go on air is 2775 and 2660 so this is the max, this is the min. Usually we hover somewhere in the middle during these runs. And let's actually take a look at what we were running at. Again, very flat lines, which is awesome. You definitely want to see that. And we were getting we were getting around 2700 over 2700. So, I think with another uh, couple hundred megahertz here, we could definitely we could definitely make a run at it because if we, again, if we look at it online, 15421, uh, Fire Strike Ultra, 1X, 15421, oh hey, they're at 46th, oh wow, okay, I didn't realize that'd be that high, just on air, so that's cool. Um, so there's 15421, we're only a couple, we're only 400 points out of the out of the top 10 and I'm pretty sure we could get that by going colder so let's prep the GPU get everything strapped on and um, see what kind of crazy numbers we could get this homemade bracket seems to be working out well uh, everything mounted up square and flush as far as I could tell we'll see what happens I guess when we go cold uh, hopefully the PLA holds and the 3d printed bracket isn't a problem uh, from my understanding PLA actually gets more pliable and less fragile when it gets colder so I'm not expecting anything to break or snap if it does I, I do have some uh, some aluminum that we could try to try to do this again with but the thermistor is all hooked up and uh, it is go time so one of the things with the AMD platform versus Nvidia is that these Navi GPUs 
are known to have what's called a cold bug. So you can't actually boot them when they are below a certain temperature. It's like 50 degrees or 60 degrees below. Um, I'm not entirely sure if the 6900 XT suffers from this or not. Regardless, uh, we posted or we booted the system now over there um, without any coolant, without any dry ice in here. So now we are going to, we have our thermoses and our acetone and uh, we're going to start bringing the temperatures down and then we'll start going for our runs. But now this is booted and validated and it works. Everything is, looks like it's good to go. So fingers crossed. So our temperatures are getting down there. The coldest this is going to get is about minus 70. So we're approaching, you know, how how much cooling capacity we have with uh, with dry ice. Um, but funny little thing here in the the AMD software is uh, apparently it thinks we're getting pretty warm. So uh, that's interesting. That's an interesting little bug. But we're going to go for it right off the bat. Um, we're going to go for 3,000 and then the uh, the minimum frequency of 2,900. Let's see if this runs. Well, we crashed. And not like crashed the program or crashed the driver, or like crashed the system. And like I mentioned, these have a cold boot bug. So once we're below whatever, I think it's minus 50, minus 40, or something like that, these won't boot. And I'm just cycling right now just keeps keeps cycling and won't boot so um, I can't blowtorch this out of the way because it's like a solid thing and I think that would make a giant mess with the acetone so I'm gonna let this boil off and uh, warm back up a little bit and then we will try again this honestly I don't know depending on how long this takes it might have to be tomorrow I'm not sure um, but I'm pretty confident that this setup works really well because otherwise this wouldn't be um, bugging right now. It would, you know, the temperatures would be within whatever reasonable range AMD deems. So, all right, kind of disappointing to be able to just one shot and, and crash and done. Um, but we have lots more dry ice and um, some more time either later or tomorrow or something like that. So here's a kind of a crappy issue so I managed to get this to boot again but um, we are still really cold and um, I had taken out a couple pieces of dry ice but it wasn't coming down that fast at all but it just happened that the system uh, booted again I actually switched the GPU to the next slot and it actually came alive the problem is it reset my Dry, uh, reset my driver and all my settings which means that my all my power tuning is now back to stock so the max we're going to get out of this is 323 watts which is not nearly enough and if I apply some fixes and bump that that means I have to reboot the system and it likely will not reboot with it being this cold so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to run this as is and see what kind of scores we get on the stock wattage which I don't have high hopes for but I guess you never know so we got a driver crash uh, and the system doesn't look like it's coming back I don't know what's going on it looks like it's still on it didn't reset or anything but um, I got nothing here it didn't even start the test so and this was just I just had it at 20 oh it looks like it re rebooted okay okay Okay, maybe this means that I'll be able to adjust the power and reboot it. Might as well give it a try. Success, 420-ish watts. Um, that was the target. Farmark is running. This looks, pff, I don't know. Let's call this perfectly stable, I guess. I don't, I don't know at this point. But I'm going to try, look at the, look at the, and we reset. Damn it. Maybe the power limit is too high. I'm going to take it down a uh, scotch. All right, so we have to call it a night. 
Um, basically, I got to a point where all I was trying to do was get one run to complete at entirely stock settings, but at sub-zero temperatures, and I couldn't get that to work at all. It kept crashing repeatedly. Finally, I just said, let me load up Furmark. Let me see if I could run Furmark at all uh, with completely stock settings. It booted up, flickered a couple of times, and then crashed, and then the system would not restart. Not like I pressed the power button and it would boot cycle, like I pressed the power button and it would click, 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 and turn off. So that let me know immediately that I had water somewhere because there was some condensation forming um, coming off of the frost that was on the pot on our motherboard. And uh, once I heard that, I just disconnected everything, uh, broke the pot down, uh, broke the card down, tried to clean it as best I could, uh, basically doused it in 99% isopropyl uh, and scrubbed it with a soft bristle toothbrush to get all the Vaseline and stuff off. And um, I don't know, I hope that nothing serious happened. I'm, I'm thinking we're probably okay. Um, but I'm going to let that car dry and we're going to try again tomorrow.